If you have any questions, I think I'll be uh, my, my team here, feel free to write it down. If you have any questions live from people watching on Facebook, we need to see all of you. Question is, uh, Darren, which animal closely resembles you? Which animal closely resembles you? So, I, <laughs> I would say, uh, which animal? Probably, probably an owl, I would say. A someone who who thrives well, operates really well at night. That, that, that's why uh, I would think that the most important thing we need to have is is, is not, not really so much the physical appearance, good looks, nice, nice, nice body and all, but a really, really uh, wisdom. And when we say wisdom, it's the, the wisdom to, to not just think, process information, uh, the emotional wisdom as well, to treat people right, to do the right things at the right time. Uh, wisdom is something that not many people tend to focus on, and uh, tuning into the inner wisdom is one of the most powerful advice someone has given to me, a friend who's a psychologist, and said that Darren, tuning into your inner wisdom means that sometimes you also trust yourself that things will get better. Trust in yourself that you have that ability or a set of abilities to be able to tide you through when the tough times come and tough times don't last. Sometimes you just need to tune into the inner wisdom. You can think a lot, you can judge a lot, you can rationalize a lot, but sometimes it just seems like you're very trapped in that mental mental exercise. The more you think and more you think about the thinking, the, the more you find it very hard to jump out of it. So that's why I would say wisdom is really important. And ours are often uh, said to be very wise creatures. So yeah, I would say I will be good because it's not so much that I'm a, I'm a wise, very wise person. I would say that um, I, I'm blessed with the education that I've received so far and uh, to be able to pass it on to the next uh, generation or pass it on to more individuals. Uh, I would say I will resembling me more it's perhaps to keep reminding me that uh, wisdom is really important and I do like the freedom to be able to do certain things and to fly around. Uh, we have a question coming in from one of our Facebook viewers. Uh, we have another question coming in from our Facebook viewer. The question is, if I speak very quickly, is it good or bad? That is a powerful question because many a times people conflate speed with clarity. Yes, many a times people think of slow means you are boring, Fast means you are confusing. They think that you're, if you're either of these two, then you can't hit the sweet spot, which is clarity. Clarity itself is important, but you can be clear even while you're speaking fast, and you can be engaging too, even if you're speaking slowly. Let me explain. Some of the rappers in the music industry, they are able to rap, they are able to make the lyrics extremely clear even though they speak at a very fast pace. Likewise for some speakers around, you can see some great motivational speakers around, they can speak really fast but yet they are very clear because clarity has got to do with articulation and if you are able to make that clear enough, you don't compromise that, you can go fast as well. Famous motivational speakers who tend to speak very fast because it's synonymous with energy, with enthusiasm, with passion. Uh, things like Tony, uh, uh, things like that. We see that a lot in speakers like Tony Anthony Robbins, for example, Gary Vaynerchuk, for instance. Uh, these are speakers who tend to speak fast, but they are very clear with their message, very clear with their articulation. So if you can articulate yourself clearly, then sure, you can go fast as well. No problem. But were you embarrassed when you you when you when you wore tidy whities on stage when you took part in the World Championship of Public Speaking at the Grand Finals? And that's one thing I just thought of sharing. People often ask, you know, Darren, that particular video is now on YouTube, and uh, I, I'm sure a bit worried. It's viewed like for now, it's about one and one point five million times, or one point five million views. Uh, so I'm actually worried that more and more people will be able to see you wearing a tidy whitey standing on stage in front of the world. I mean, on the world stage and uh, competing at the Grand Finals. Uh, why did you do that in the first place? Do you think it was strategic? Give it a chance, would you still do the same? My answer is, I would still do the same. Here's the litmus test that my mentors have been sharing with me over the years. In, in, in public speaking, we do something, the litmus test, when we do something, especially when we use visual aids or when we use props, can be a PowerPoint slide, can be a vanguard sheet, can be a poster, can be things that you wear, can be things that, that you bring. You do that thing if, one, this is a two-part litmus test. Number one, 
if and only if it advances your speech message, which means that if it's just out there for gimmick, it does nothing to advance your message, then don't do it, don't wear it, don't use it. The second part of the litmus test is that if and only if it is appropriate and is generally accepted too, that most people won't feel offended by it. So with these two, these twin criteria of, of my litmus test, I ask myself that question. 2016, when I took part in the World Championship of Public Speaking, wearing tidy whities on stage, of course, it was outside of my long pants, does it advance my speech message? And the answer to that is, it absolutely advances my speech message. Because number one, when we were able to do that, it captured the audience members' attention to see how I was like, to transport them back to the time when I was bullied during my younger days. They were able to see. It's called reenactment. Number two, when we took out that pair of tidy whities and show how we are able to deal with the inner movies, that again is an illustration to help advance the message of outsmart and outlast your inner movies. Apart from that, second criteria, uh, the second criterion was whether or not it was appropriate, would people be accepting of it? Yes. Because if, if I were to just wear tidy whities without a long pants, then sure, and that might have been uh, that might have been inappropriate because most people maybe they aren't used to that or it, it might not be suitable for that occasion. But if you already have a long hands there and tidy whities over that, you already have superheroes doing that like Superman and Batman and stuff, then it's still alright. But here's the thing, a lot of people as you are in the speaking business or whether you're in the contest business, there are some individuals, they are well-intentioned individuals, they will come to you and they will tell you what you cannot do. They will come to you and they tell you that, hey, you know what, um, this is not something that will work. And they will tell you that, you know, if you do this, you're just going to fail miserably. It's, it's a similar advice, and uh, a very wise man once told me this, that when people say that, and with the best of intentions, it's not that they want you to fail, but what they are doing is at times, they are superimposing their fears on you. When people tell you that there's no way human beings can board an aircraft and eventually fly and take off, they didn't stop the right brothers from doing the right thing. Uh, individuals saying that there's no way you can eventually invent something that individuals can use the internet, they can talk, they can do FaceTime at the same time, but here we, have, we still have smartphones. When people tell you that it's not possible to hack a phone with just one button, and guess what? People decided to come up with phones and innovate accordingly. So when people tell you things cannot be done, that's where innovation happens, that's where creativity happens. So that's where you would then need to use your inner wisdom. You need to either test it with even more audience members and then make a decision. Perhaps in consultation with someone who's that experienced with your coaches and to find out if it's possible for something like that to work. Let me just let you on one thing. A very good friend of mine who actually helped me uh, very much uh, during the final phase of my speaking journey, he's none other than a great brother, great friend of mine, who's F. Tate, the year 2000 World Champion of Public Speaking. And I've been saying and sharing this on many different platforms, different occasions. Ed is a very generous man, and he's a lovely individual. And he shared with me that when he was competing as well, people told him that, you know, getting the audience members to echo after you, to reply, it's just not going to work. But in the end, did he do it? He, he did it anyway as well. And he managed to win the World Championship of Public Speaking. So again, is to have that inner balance to strike the right equilibrium that tells you, you know, what you should do and what you should not. And um, to pay very close attention, so that's the fine line there. Uh, to, I mean, that's where innovation and creativity happens.